Have you thought about buying this resin, Unicone Art, from Amazon? Well, so have I. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Moon Custer Art. It's Janet here, and I bought some resin off of Amazon. I have, well, I'm in a few different resin uh, Facebook groups, and I've seen some of the members in those groups talk about Unicone Art their resin. So I saw it, they were having a special on Amazon, so I went ahead and bought it, and I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. So here's my box. This is exactly how it came through Amazon. And it's nice and crystal clear. Let's see if I can get that. You can see right through. So no yellowing. That's always a good thing. So that's their resin component. And here's the hardener component. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio resin. So that makes for easy mixing. There's 16.9 fluid ounces of hardener and 16.9 fluid ounces of resin. So um, yeah, it's unusual if they both way the same but okay um, maybe i'll pop it on my scale and look at that but anyway uh it's unicone not unicorn as the picture might make you think <laughs> and uh we are gonna test it and there's also a paper inside so let's see so it's got, you know, their company and things like that on here. And it has the instruction sheet and a safety data sheet. Um, so it talks about, you know, hazards and health effects. Um, these are all things that anytime you use resin, you should be paying attention to. I don't care what resin you're using. Pay attention to things like that and don't take risks. I have my full face mask out, my respirator, which I will be wearing, and I will be putting a fan in the window and pulling the uh, fumes out. So uh, yeah, let's get started playing around. All right, and just like I said I was going to do, I decided that I would just pop these on my scale, it's zeroed out, and so this is the resin component. The one is standing for uh, one pound. So it's one pound, 4.7 ounces. And that is the complete bottle sealed up. Let's take that off of there. Ooh, sorry about the, here is the hardener component. And we have one pound, 2.8 ounces. So even though the bottles are labeled for 16.9 fluid, both of them, just as I had surmised, hardener weighs less than the resin. Okay, so again, don't measure, yeah, measure, good word. Don't measure your resin when it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Don't measure it by weight. You're going to get wacky measurements. Measure it by getting your constant. Remember, I like to use water. And, uh, yeah, I got two marks there right by each other because I didn't realize I wasn't going to be able to get the amount in the cup. So I have... A mark at 7 fluid ounces and at 14 fluid ounces. And that's done with water. So 7 and 7 are my measurements. And they are going to be equal. A 1 to 1 by volume, not by weight. Because water weighs differently than the resin. Okay, let's get going. I always begin by having the hardener in my cup first. It's thinner, and it's not going to cling to the walls of your cup. I add the resin component on top, and again, I have my marks on the side of my cup, so I'm just getting down on eye level and filling that in. 
I put this on really fast speed. I did mix this for about three to four minutes and the recommendation is to mix it for three minutes. So I scrape my sides and you can see a little bit of striations in there. It's a little bit cloudy, but as I continue mixing, it begins to clear and everything is good. It is a nice clear resin, so I was happy with that part of it. Very few bubbles, very thin viscosity to it, and uh, yeah, not a lot of intense smell with this product, so I was happy with that too. So I'm going to be pouring, I wanted, I've been wanting to do a pink sandy beach for a while, so I decided, yeah, well, let's do a beach pour. So I've mixed up my resin, tinted it in some nice aqua tones. I use, uh, I've got some black diamonds pigments in there, some um, Art Tree Creations pigments, and also some Dr. P.H. Martin ink is in there as well. So a bunch of different types. I have no 99% uh, alcohol in any of the pigments. And I'm coming around, I'm just spreading that to cover the canvas. And I had just redone my tabletop. So unfortunately, I was not perfectly level on my tabletop. And you can see it's flowing towards the camera quite a bit in this film here. So now I'm gonna hit it with the torch and then I start using the heat gun and that's to remove the bubbles and to get that resin to start flowing. All right, and we're just gonna move that around a little bit, add on the Dr. P.H. Martin and a stripe of clear and then white on top. There it goes. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in here cause this is where I start seeing trouble. Right here, I'm getting some oranging or burning. The resin is beginning to scorch. So that's not good. That means it's not able to hold up to the heat. And in order to get good lacing, when you're working on an ocean piece especially, you really need to apply some heat. So you can see I get some pretty good lacing that shows up out of the Art Tree Creations, their Iceland White. And, you know, you have to really drive it out with that heat gun, but there's a yellowing that's occurring. And that's happening because the resin is not able to withstand the heat from the heat gun. I've zoomed in close so that you can see what I'm talking about. So I've laid out this line of clear and then the white. I come in with the heat gun and I'm not getting a lot of lacing, so I want to use my torch just a tiny little bit to give it some heat. There it goes. And then I blow it out and you're gonna watch in that upper left-hand corner. You see how it starts to go to brown? That's not good. And it just kept on getting more yellow as it was sitting there. It was, you know, the heat stays in and it just wasn't performing well. So the bottom line for me is this is not going to work well for doing ocean pours. All right, so I'm just going to finish getting some of the resin out on there to cover my canvas and put it to bed. It's the next day. I'm outside in the backyard with some sunshine, and I marked up some photographs to show you what I'm talking about. Along that long red line at the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of a yellow tint in there that again is from the scorching and in within those circles i can see with my eye that there are some scorching in the resin in those spots as well so the unicone resin is not holding up well to the heat this uh, photo shows you even better look at the scorching and this one is the worst area of all lots of scorch marks so here's the overall piece um you know it, it, the Colors are pretty. I'm probably going to pour over it and try to salvage the piece, although it was a used canvas I had lying around, so who knows? It might even just go off to the pile. I'm not going to recommend this type of resin. The Unicone resin just doesn't hold up to the heat that we need when we're trying to make ocean waves, and um, it's just too thin. So look for something better. 
I always like to try something new. So, hey, my pain is your gain. I will not recommend this if you're looking to do an uh, ocean pour. You can see the browns there. It's pretty sad. So, I used an old canvas. Um, it really, it's probably not going to stick around. It's probably going to go out to the garbage bin. But, you know, if I can save you guys from doing it, okay. I'm happy that I gave it a test. And if you already have the resin, try using it in some molds. Maybe it'll work well in molds. It's got a nice viscosity for that. Um, you know, it doesn't hold a lot of bubbles, so maybe it just works better in that type of application. But if you're looking to do an ocean piece, I do not recommend using Unicone Art Resin. I hope you enjoyed my review and check out my other videos I've got available. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time here on Mooncusser Art.